Shina. So today I'm going to be doing a what I eat in a day um, kind of video. So it's my first one. So I'm really excited for this series because I'm going to be doing a whole lot more of them. So anyway, I'm going to be sharing with you how to make some really simple healthy meals that you can make at home. And the ingredients are locally available here in Kenya. You can get them from um, supermarkets near you or from whatever market you want to shop at. And then also the meal plans I'm sharing with you guys. I'm going to like just give you ideas and inspire you at home to just have different ideas of what you can combine with what's already in your fridge or your pantry so just use them as inspiration but we'll also be leaving recipes for some of the meals I share with you so they'll be down below in the link so to start off with we're starting with breakfast and for breakfast I always start my morning with water so sometimes the water can just be plain like on this particular day or sometimes I can actually um, infuse the water with like a bit of lemon or a bit of orange speaking of which I actually have a video on that um, on YouTube so you can check out uh, the different ways that I infuse water to just give them a bit more flavor if you don't want to drink water like just plainly or you're just trying to add a little bit of H2O in your system so next was the breakfast itself and for breakfast on this particular day I wanted to have boiled eggs and so for the eggs um funny thing when I was actually baking the boiled eggs because I was like in a hurry and I didn't want to go through the process like sometimes as chefs you know these things but then you're like oh no don't happen to me so anyway when I was boiling my two eggs one of them cracked and then rather than me wasting it or panicking I decided actually to just leave it in so that to show you guys like this mishaps do happen so basically for the egg that cracked I just took it out before it had started to like solidify and then I placed it in a bowl and I decided to just fry that one egg and I added like some chives on top of it and some salt and some black pepper so I served my boiled egg and fried egg with a side of tomato salad and for the tomato salad all I did was just sprinkle it with some salt and some black pepper and that was it. Sometimes I'll do like a full dressing, other times I won't, it really just depends on my mood but for breakfast I do want to complicate things and then I had this with coffee, other times I'll have it with tea but for this particular day I was feeling like coffee so that's what I had. <laughs> And as you can see my boiled egg was perfectly cooked i do not like my eggs runny so my eggs are always like fully cooked <laughs> so that is what i had and then now it was time to proceed for lunch lunch so for this particular day um my nephew was staying with me and he's actually vegetarian so i decided to make for us a coconut sweet potato dango curry or stew that's what i'm calling it but it's pretty much like an all in everything vegetable stew because i pretty much just added like the sweet potatoes potatoes and what other vegetables i had plus now the lentils and of course the coconut to make the dish so you can make this work with whatever vegetables you have like in the fridge or pantry freezer just whatever you have make it work for you so in a souffrian i heated up some oil and added my chopped onions and then just tied that until the onions were like um a bit uh, limp basically just sweating the onions and then i proceeded to add my sweet potatoes and my potatoes which i had just thinly sliced and for the potatoes the reason i sliced them this way is just because i wanted them, i wanted them to cook quickly so i did not want them like chunky or very large i needed them to be like quite thin so that they could cook quickly because like I said, I was making like a simple lunch. I didn't want this to take like forever and ever. Anyway, and then once I added the sweet potatoes and the potatoes, I continued um, sweating them and stirring them. And then I covered the sofria for like about five minutes. And the reason for this was so that the sweet potatoes could actually like caramelize. Because remember that sweet potatoes have some sugar. So I wanted them to get like a bit um, caramelized and um, release some of their natural sweetness before adding any of the other vegetables. Then now I proceeded to add my chopped carrots and my celery and for the celery um, it's not a must for you if you do not have it you can use again whatever vegetables you have just make them work if you had peas or something else you could just use that but for this particular day I only had um, the celery and the carrots which is what I added and then I stirred that in just so that everything could mix well then I covered and simmered for about three minutes just to sweat the carrots and celery then now I proceeded to add my spices and for the spices I used some cumin powder, a bit of cinnamon powder. Again the cinnamon powder here is to draw out the sweetness of the sweet potatoes. So I'm just uh, playing off the sweet potatoes and trying to balance off the flavor. As well as adding some turmeric and the turmeric here was for the color. And finally some salt for flavor. I mixed all the vegetables before adding some boiled dango aka green grams then stirred everything really really well and let the, veg the vegetables fry just for about a minute before adding the coconut milk. I 
I then gave the stew a general stir, covering and simmering for about 10 minutes until the potatoes or sweet potatoes were fully cooked and the flavors had developed. I finished the sweet potato and dango stew with some parsley just because that's what I had. So I chopped some fresh parsley and added them at the very end. Then start everything together and voila, our food was ready. <laughs> it was time to munch and dig in. This dish was absolutely heavenly. I think there's just something about making um, dishes like with what you have available in your fridge. Like they just turned out so amazing. Oh my God, I was so proud of this dish. <laughs> I could have eaten it forever. Like talk about comfort vegetarian food. I mean the sweet potatoes in this coupled with the coconut milk oh my god they were just like a match made in heaven i know i say that a lot but they really were they were just it was just so 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 good <laughs> if you're a vegetarian and um you're looking to try this recipe please do i promise you'll not regret it you'll absolutely love it So it was finally time for dinner and for dinner i decided to go back to my kenyan roots and actually have um ugali spinach and minced meat technically we normally have it um ugali with skumawiki most times and like beef but i decided to have minced meat because i just wanted my dish to be like ready like really really fast and minced meat cooks really fast and i love spinach so sometimes alternate between spinach and skumawiki whichever one i'm in the mood for for dinner, I started with my minced meat, which I added directly to a saucepan, and I did not add any oil to the saucepan, just because I was using like um, regular minced meat and not lean minced meat, and regular minced meat tends to be quite fatty. So once the minced meat has started frying, I used a wooden spoon to break up the lumps of the meat, so that that way it could fry evenly and turn brown evenly. And then um, I wanted the fat to render in this, so I let it fry for a while. And in the meantime, as I was waiting for my meat to brown, I proceeded to prepare my vegetables. For the vegetables, I used some onions, garlic, and capsicum. For the capsicum, I was using a red capsicum, aka ho ho, and um, it was not looking the best. I mean, it had seen better days, but the inside was looking absolutely fresh. So I went ahead and cut it really thinly, as well as the onions, and finally chopped the garlic. So by now my minced meat was already turning brown so I went ahead and stirred it some more and then once I stirred it um, you can actually see the fat in this so this is the fat I was talking about since I used regular minced meat so what I did is basically just drain out the excess fat and you can use a spoon to drain out the fat or you can use like a lid which is what I also showed you guys the two ways that you can drain out the fat so I put a lid on top of the sufria and then just left out like a small opening so that that way when you invert the sufria the oil is going to drain right through as you can see and for the beef fat usually I use it in other dishes so sometimes I'll use it in some vegetable dishes or some beef dishes for this particular day I actually used it in the spinach which you'll see in just a few minutes so once I was happy with the amount of oil I had drained, I put back the meat in the sofria and then now proceeded to fry my onions. So I added the onions to the minced meat and then fried that and covered the sofria to just allow for them to sweat and soften. So I stirred in the garlic and let it fry until it was aromatic, so just for about a minute or so. Then I proceeded to add the sliced capsicums, stirred them in, and then seasoned with some black pepper and some soy sauce. I gave everything a good stir, and then afterwards I added like a little bit of water. If you notice your minced meat is looking too dry, don't be afraid to add a little bit of water, because I wasn't using any tomatoes for this, and I wanted the minced meat to be a little bit wet. So I added a bit of water, plus some tomato paste for some color and some vibrancy. I then mixed everything together and then covered to simmer for about 5 minutes. So most of the water had now evaporated, my mincemeat was looking absolutely beautiful and gorgeous so it was only time to finish it with um, some dania. So I finally chopped some fresh dania and then just added that at the very end and then mixed everything in together and everything was just looking so lovely so I gave it one more stir and it was finally time to taste and see whether I needed to add any more seasoning but everything was perfect. I know it was time to make the skumawiki, which I made really fast. Um, so in a sofria, I just melted the beef fat that uh, I showed you guys that I had rendered from the mincemeat. 
I added some chopped onions and let that fry for a while. I wanted the onions to turn a bit golden brown. That's how I like my onions for my skumawiki or for my spinach. Whenever I'm making my greens, I like my onions to like caramelize a bit. So I let that continue frying until they were caramelized. In the meantime, I went ahead and chopped my spinach. So for my spinach, I just chopped it like really thinly as you can see. So they were looking very pretty, like ribbon like. Oh, they're just looking so gorgeous. I mean, Mama Mboga will be proud of me. <laughs> anyway, then it was time to add my spinach to the sofria. So I added the spinach to the onions and I stirred everything in. And then I let them wilt and soften until most of the liquid had evaporated. Then I added some salt to the spinach, mixed it in and let the spinach cook for a further minute or so, just until all the water had evaporated and my spinach was looking nice and dark green. Anyway, so now it was time to serve our food and it was looking so lovely. I mean, just look at it. Oof, I couldn't wait to dig in. I served my mincemeat and spinach with some ugali. The mincemeat was looking so tasty and it was time to munch away. Munch, munch, munch. This is why I love mincemeat with ugali because I just feel like it cooks so much faster than regular beef. Also, when I was making this dish, I actually took a picture and sent it to my friend and she was like, Shina, who eats ugali with mincemeat? And I was like, ah, don't people do that? So I was like, I don't know if it's not a thing. Is it not a thing? You guys can comment below and let me know whether you eat your ugali with mincemeat or whether you just have mincemeat with spaghetti. I don't know. I, I like having it with different things. So I really hope you enjoyed watching this video and that you'll get some ideas from some of the meals that I make for myself. As you've seen, uh, my meals tend to vary like day to day. So this is not going to be always like what I eat every other day because honestly speaking, I like my meals like different. So I'm always going more with like intuition cooking rather than planning out like what I'm going, going to eat for like each meal or dinner. So I don't always do like full meal prep meals. I kind of do more like I'll buy ingredients and then from the ingredients I have I'll decide like what dishes I feel like cooking. So it mostly depends on what I have available. So I really hope that you guys will take inspiration from that and see different ways you can combine whatever is in your fridge or pantry so that you can be a little bit more creative in the kitchen. And if you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I'll appreciate that. And also, like I mentioned, I'll be doing a lot more of this style of videos. So if you liked it, consider subscribing to the channel because there'll be a lot more of those to come. And of course, hit the bell so that you don't miss out on any other delicious recipes. And I'll be sure to catch you guys in the next video. Bye!